When I'm not selling real estate, one thing I love to do is art. I decided to tie in my passions with a painting of Rainbow Row, which is one of the most iconic streets of real estate in Charleston. I'll be going through my process of painting and explaining some of the history of Rainbow Row. This photo of me and my fiance was my reference photo. I used to freehand all my artwork until I saw one tutorial where the artist traced a house and painted over it, and that's been life changing. It saves so much time and looks way better this way. I used to feel ashamed about tracing, but I'm not trying to be a famous artist, I just want a pretty picture to look at, so I decided not to worry anymore. Also, I know I have brushes and pencils here, so just ignore that. I traced the original photo with Sharpie to get all the outlines crisp, then I put a light, sorry to my MacBook screen, under the watercolor painting with the traced photo in between. I turned all the lights off to help me see the photo underneath better. This strategy lets me draw in pencil the outline of the houses so that I can then watercolor them in. The next step is self-explanatory. I fill the houses in with their respective pretty colors with watercolor paint, then go in with the details later, like the shutters. Now I'll talk about Rainbow Row and why it's so popular. This colorful row of houses is located on East Bay Street in the south of Broad District of Charleston. It's super close to Waterfront Park with the Pineapple Fountain, the historic City Market, excellent restaurants, and more. These homes date all the way back to the mid-1700s, around the time of the Revolutionary War, and they served as commercial buildings with living quarters on the top floors. They were built at different times, and many of them were destroyed in a fire in 1778. What's interesting is that these houses haven't always been so famous. Most of them actually sat vacant for almost 150 years until a few key women decided to take on the project of restoring them. In the 1920s, Suzanne Pringle Frost bought six of these buildings but wasn't able to restore them all right away. She founded what eventually became the current Preservation Society of Charleston, and you can thank her for a lot of the historical buildings being preserved instead of being torn down for gas stations and other things. In 1931, Dorothy Haskell Porcher Lee also purchased some of the buildings to restore them, and she started the colorful theme. According to my Google research, she painted hers pink based on a colonial Caribbean color scheme, and the other owners and future owners followed the trend of pastel colors. That's how it has now come to be a rainbow row. Most of the houses were restored by 1945, and it's become one of the most photographed places in Charleston. Two of these houses have actually just been listed for sale and both went under contract within one day. The purple house was listed for $3.395 million and the turquoise house on the right was listed for $3.695 million. It's always neat to be able to get a peek into these historic homes when they're sold. They're built with a Charleston style, narrow in width but long in length, so they're much more spacious than they seem from the front, with their square footage ranging from 2 to over 4,000 square feet. This final step of my painting is with pen ink, and it really makes these watercolor paintings come to life. Here I can still see the pencil outline that I had drawn earlier, and now that it's colorful, it's easier to trace over the lines. I use a ruler to make sure the lines look straight and sharp. I also add more detailing, like the bricks on the chimneys and the lines on the shutters. Once I'm done with a black ink pen, I like going in with a white ink pen because it makes everything pop even more by adding that extra highlight. Then I write the title, put my signature, and it's all done. Thank you.
The last step is framing, and then it's ready to go in my home YouTube studio, so you'll be able to see it in my videos. I hope you enjoyed this video of my painting of Rainbow Row, and let me know in the comments if you've been to Rainbow Row yourself.